The film begins at a dating gathering of a group of high school teenagers in 1979. They introduce themselves before choosing their respective partners randomly. One of the girls named Lee Jung Hee didn't expect much at the meeting, especially from the man with glasses she called the fish head. She didn't like him very much. However, fate said that they should be together. The man with glasses is named Dong Moon and he immediately falls in love with Jung Hee at first sight. After such an awkward conversation, their meeting was broken up by a patrol from Jong Yin High School for girls where Jung Hee attended school. Dong Moon, who really cares about her, takes his idol away and then hides her somewhere. Meanwhile, he was confronted by a very strict and scary looking patrol leader. She is Jung Hee's school teacher who comes to put her students in order. The teacher almost found Jung Hee who was hiding behind the cloth. Dong Moon tries hard to protect her and hugs her tightly. Luckily, one of the patrol officers came with an information that the other students were going to a different direction. The teacher left and they were finally free. Jung Hee is angry at Dong Moon for touching her, but she is also grateful. Dong Moon openly asks Jung Hee out on a date. However, unfortunately, he was rejected outright. A few days later, Jung Hee was invited by her friends to go to a cultural night event at a church, where reportedly there will be the most popular boy from Jerion High School for boys. Upon arrival, Jung Hee meets Dong Moon and she is still cold to him. Not long after that, Jung Hee meets A Suk, the leader of a gang at school who doesn't like her because of a problem. Jung Hee tries to avoid her and hides in a room. That's when she met the most popular boy, Sun Jin, which is mentioned by her friends. Sun Jin helps her hiding from A Suk, making her heart melt and fall in love. At school, Jung Hee gets a news that on Sunday, Sun Jin will come to the library in the city center. Even though it is far away, Jung Hee still tries to meet him because she can't stand the longing. She tirelessly rides a bicycle in the morning. However, when she got there, she ran out of tickets and could only use the girl's room. Dong Moon is in the library and he is very happy to see his idol again. Jung Hee comes and is friendly to him, but it turns out that she just wants to exchange tickets. Dong Moon has mixed room tickets where Sun Jin is there to study. Dong Moon doesn't accept the offer right away, but Jung Hee is too cute to ignore and he ends up giving her the ticket for free. Jung Hee sees Sun Jin in the library and she is happy. Not long after Jung Hee went to the toilet, Sun Jin left the library and his place was seated by Dong Moon. Jung Hee goes after Sun Jin but doesn't pay attention to her surroundings, as a result she almost crashes into a car and falls. Sun Jin who saw the incident immediately helped. The car owner also came and apologized feeling guilty. While the car owner was away due to an urgent need, he left his daughter to help. Sun Jin carried Jung Hee to the nearest pharmacy to treat her wound. Jung Hee is in pain, but also happy. The daughter of the car owner has a soft heart. It is proven by how worried she is for Jung Hee. It caught Sun Jin's attention and he kept staring at her on several occasions. After what happened, the daughter of the car owner left. Meanwhile, Sun Jin takes Jung Hee home. On the way, they meet Bong Su Jung Hee's twin brother who turns out to be Sun Jin's junior at his school. Bong Su respects him very much and he accepts the order from his senior to take Jung Hee's bicycle that was left behind. Arriving in front of the house, Jung Hee meets Dong Moon who was waiting for her worriedly. He was very worried and tried to ask her a few things, but Jung Hee said that he didn't need to know all about her business. The next day, the daughter of the car owner who almost hit Jung Hee came to school and it turned out that she was a transfer student from the city of Seoul named Hei Ju. Jung Hee feels displeased with her for no apparent reason. She was confused but finally realized that the feeling grew from her little heart that was jealous and afraid that Hei Ju's beauty would snatch Sun Jin from her. What Jung Hee feared really happened. Sun Jin begins to be attracted to Ho Ju, even waiting for her to come home from school, just to give her his number. A freelancer named Young Chun helps Ha Ju move to her new residence, which is not far from Jung Hee's house. He also fixes some things in the house to get additional income. One day, Young Chun saves Ha Ju from a falling log. Despite rumors that Young Chun is a former gangster and has a child, Ha Ju is not afraid. She was purely judging him by his current attitude, not his dark past. Everyone always thinks badly of Young Chun just because of his poor background. Young Chun lives alone with his younger brother whom the locals think is his own son. Young Chun doesn't really care about the rumors and is always kind to anyone who needs his help. Meanwhile, Asuk is punished for being caught smoking in the church toilet while getting into trouble with Jung Hee. Asuk increasingly resents Jung Hee for thinking she was the one who reported it, but she can't do anything about it because she got suspended for a few days. As time goes by, Jung Hee's fear slowly disappears and she accepts Ha Ju as her best friend, trusting that she will not interfere with her love story with Sun Jin. They both belong to the broadcasting club which is quite popular at school. Until one day their broadcasting club will hold a collaboration with Jerion High School, where Sun Jin becomes the chairman of the upcoming representative. After the meeting, everyone agreed to choose Jung Hee to host the joint broadcast program with Sun Jin. 
Jung Hee is very happy and she can't wait for it. However, the day before the event starts, Lee Sook has returned to stop Jung Hee on her way home from school to take revenge. Afraid that something might happen to her, Jung Hee runs towards the lake where she ends up falling and drowning. Luckily, Sun Jin is there to help her. After what's happened, Jung Hee was admitted to a nearby hospital. She was surprised to find out that the person who helped him was actually Dong Moon. But what surprised her even more was the fact that she had been unconscious for so long and had missed the event she had been waiting for so much. Jung Hee rushes to school to make sure and it turns out that the show is already over. She cries before finally finding Sun Jin arguing about his feelings with Ha Ju. Sun Jin knows that Jung Hee likes him and he lies to protect her feelings. He explained that it was just a casual debate about broadcast programs with Ha Ju taking her place. Not long after her family came, Jung Hee fainted and she was taken back to the hospital. That night, Jung Hee's mother went to see Dong Moon because no one came to see him. He was treated for a high fever after rescuing Jung Hee. Bong Su knows him at school and tells that Dong Moon's parents are busy working overseas. Dong Moon asks the nurse not to contact his parents so they don't worry about him. And that's why no one knows about him. The next day, Jung Hee, who had woken up, came to see Dong Moon. She burst into tears after receiving news that Dong Moon's condition had worsened and was taken to a Seoul hospital. However, it turned out to be just a misunderstanding. Dong Moon did not leave and his condition began to improve. Jung Hee immediately hugs him gratefully, but then gets angry after remembering that Dong Moon stole her first kiss. Jung Hee's mother finally finds out that A Sook is responsible for her daughter's accident. She adamantly asks the teacher at the school to expel her, assuming she is a problematic child. That view is based on rumors about her mother who is considered to like to seduce men. A Sook doesn't admit what she did because she never planned it from the start. After receiving the punishment, A Sook threatens Jung Hee's friends, thinking that they were the ones who reported her. Hei Ju tries to warn her that her actions were not right, and they end up arguing. The school teacher who saw the incident scolded A Sook while looking down on her, You're right. A Sook replied with a cynical look and admitted that she was a scum of society in contrast to Haju, who was the daughter of a prominent family. Heju understands that the school teacher is defending her, but his words to A Sook are too much and she disagrees. Jung Hee's mother makes a special dish for her daughter's recovery. However, the father did not really like it because it was considered a waste. Jung Hee's father is an old man who adheres to the old notion that a woman is not equal with a man. That's why he cares more about his son. Jung Hee's mother realized that, but she didn't dare to fight it. As a result, Jung Hee always becomes an outlet when there is a problem with her family. Luckily, she has a very caring aunt who is always by her side and supports her at all times. The aunt was not part of the family, but a maid who worked and lived together. Jung Hee's family has a clothing factory in her home, and they are too busy to take care of household needs. That night, Jung Hee bravely fought her father. She said that he was very evil. He never appreciates her mother or cared for her who nearly died in the lake. She compared to his brother. Jung Hee said that his father's treatment would be different. Jung Hee cries and says that she will grow up to be an amazing and successful woman. When things start to heat up, the school teacher comes with A Sook to have a good talk about the previous matter. They hope Jung Hee's family will forgive her instead of asking her to be expelled from school because she's still a minor after all. Jung Hee's father understands and he will forgive her if A Sook will kneel before his daughter. A Sook does not accept it and chooses to be expelled from school rather than having to do such a humiliating act. However, Jung Hee's father threatens A Sook's mother's life. He said that he could drive her out of town for his connections. Jung Hee knows that A Sook is at fault, but her father's demands are too much and she goes against it. A Sook doesn't care about her life at school, but she doesn't have the heart to ruin her mother's life, which has a bad reputation in society. A Sook reluctantly kneels down and apologizes, but Jung Hee asks her to stand up. Jung Hee realizes that her father did it because he felt sorry for her. But he was too proud to apologize and chose to oppress weaker people to cover up his mistakes. Heiju finally finds out that Jung Hee really likes Sun Jin. She comes to see Jung Hee explaining that she doesn't have any feelings for Sun Jin and hopes that their friendship will continue well. Jung Hee comes to see Sun Jin and asks him, does he like Ha Ju? To ensure, Sun Jin said that he didn't have any feelings. Don Moon comes to interrupt the conversation and introduces himself politely to Sun Jin, who is his senior at school. Don Moon explains that Sun Jin is also liked by the girl he likes, and he came to make sure Jung Hee's feeling doesn't get hurt. However, Sun Jin's answer to them remains the same that he doesn't have any feelings for Ha Ju. Jung Hee's mother is very grateful to Don Moon for saving her daughter. She invited him into the house and gave him various kinds of food. That night, Jung Hee accidentally saw Sun Jin come to see Ha Ju in front of her house. Sun Jin confesses his feelings once again, but Ha Ju refuses and says that she doesn't like him. Jung Hee, who heard that, felt she had been lied to. 
Dong Moon, who happened to have just returned from Jung Hee's house, accidentally eavesdropped and questions Sun Jin's lies. Meanwhile, Jung Hee watches him from afar. Sun Jin just doesn't want to hurt Jung Hee's feelings, but for Dong Moon, it's wrong. Dong Moon challenges him to a fight, but his abilities are not as good as Sun Jin's and he loses in the end. As Dong Moon sits pensively in the middle of the bridge, Jung Hee comes over to him pretending not to know what happened. Jung Hee cries because her love is one-sided but she says that it's because of her family problems. Don Moon also cries because he can't reach his love, but he says that it's because the wound is too painful. Just as things are getting better, Don Moon invites Jung Hee to go out to eat and for the first time he is not rejected. Don Moon could only watch because he was already too full. Meanwhile, Jung Hee refuses to eat alone because she feels bad for him. Jung Hee's stomach rumbles and she looks very hungry. Don Moon who realized that forced himself to eat couldn't bear to let his idol starve. Heiju's father, who is a lecturer, takes a student to hide in his house. It turned out that he was an activist who moved after being fired for spreading communist ideas. Heiju understands and she keeps it a secret from everyone, including Yum Chun. On one occasion, Heiju came to the pharmacy where Yum Chun worked to buy bandages. Yum Chun is alarmed to think that it was Haju who was injured, but it was actually for the student that her father had hidden. This incident makes Haju sure of her feelings that she likes Yum Chun. Meanwhile, it is revealed that A Sook actually really likes Yeon Chun despite all the bad rumors about him. A Sook feels that they are both alienated from society. Yeon Chun is always nice to A Sook because he cares about her. Seeing her live as a rebellious student reminds him of his dark past. Yeon Chun always warns her to live a good life so she doesn't regret it like he does. Time flies but Jung Hee can't forget Sun Jin yet. All attempts to forget him failed every time she met him. Until one day, Sun Jin confessed everything to Jung Hee and he apologized. Jung Hee's mother asked Dong Moon to be a private tutor for her children, because it turns out that he is a smart student and has been an overall champion. Dong Moon accepts it gladly because it will allow him to meet his idol often. Jung Hee's determination to become a successful woman is not just a hoax. She really studied hard and made it into the top 10 in her class. However, the father did not see it as a great achievement. The condition of the student that Heiju's father had hidden got worse and worse. Heiju has no choice but to ask Young Chun for help, while her father is busy. Things get worse when Heiju's father doesn't come home for several days without news. She desperately asks Young Chun to find her father's whereabouts. Heiju loses her passion for studying and she can't focus. Jung He realizes that something is wrong and she tries to understand her condition. Instead of walking away after learning about Heiju's troubles and the fact that she's the daughter of a dangerous activist, Jung Hee remains determined to be good friends with her and help her. Young Chun hasn't been able to find Haju's father yet, but he doesn't give up. When Young Chun starts communicating with Haju, often the locals start to think that they have an unusual relationship. The police are trying to solve the problem about Haju's father. As the police chief, Sun Jin's father hates him very much for all his efforts to help student rallies. He firmly asks his son not to have anything to do with Haju. Haju's father is arrested by the police, but later released due to lack of evidence. He was found unconscious in the station before Young Chun took him home. Sun Jin, knowing the matter, feels guilty to Haju for not being able to help her one bit. The news of Haju's father's disappearance began to spread among the people and eventually reached the students of Haju's school. Haju is labeled as a communist child and people start to stay away from her, even though she doesn't really know anything about her father's business. Until one day, Jung Hee got a group assignment with Haju, and she came to her house to do a group assignment. Jung Hee is surprised to see how kind Haju's father is despite the bad rumors being spread. Jung Hee believes that they are a good family. Even when compared to his father who doesn't respect women, Jung Hee feels that Haju's father is better. When the burden on Haju's mind increases because of her father's deteriorating health, Sun Jin feels worried and that is proof that he has not been able to forget her. Sun Jin comes to Haju's house to check on her, but she refuses to do so. When Jung Hee meets him, Sun Jin is too embarrassed to admit that he still has hope in Haju and makes the excuse that he came to take her out to see a movie. Jung Hee believes that it's just an excuse, but she can't refuse his invitation. Jung Hee always dreams of the moment when she went to watch a movie with Sun Jin. Her dream came true, but it didn't make her happy. At the end, Sun Jin apologizes for everything and says goodbye. It turned out that throughout the day, Dong Moon continued to follow Jung Hee from a distance. Jung Hee, who finds it out, is angry and she asks him not to follow her anymore because it is very annoying. Dong Moon says that he is just worried that something will happen to her. Those words turned out to be very hurtful to his feelings and he promised not to follow her again. The shocking news comes from Jung Hee's father who has a secret relationship with his maid named Du Hua. They have lived together for a long time and Jung Hee's father is always sweet to her secretly. 
Du Hua has long been dumped by her husband and the care that Zhang He's father shows slowly makes her heart melt. But then she realized that there were feelings of a woman to be protected, feelings of a wife and mother of two children who were her employer. Du Hua decides to move and find work elsewhere before she destroys someone's family that she respects and loves like her own family. The news of the affair finally reached Zhang He's mother. After recalling her husband's change in attitude, Zhang He's mother finally believes that her husband is secretly having a relationship with her own maid. However, she was too embarrassed to confirm the news, considering that she was a woman who was looked down by her own husband. Since then, she always hides her sadness and pretends to be happy. Zhang He is late to hear the news that Sun Jin will be moving to Seoul City. Bong Su forgot to tell her about it even though Dong Mu had reminded him. Zhang He finally realized the meaning of Sun Jin's apology and goodbye before. But she cried as if she couldn't let him go. At school, Dong Moon gets a letter from Sun Jin with his new phone number and home address written in it. Sun Jin hopes that Dong Moon will remain good friends with him after what happened. Dong Moon comes to Zhang He's house to teach as usual. Seeing his idol looking so sad, Dong Moon reluctantly gives So Jin's new contact. When Zhang He is confused about her feelings, she meets Haiju who tells her that love makes one very brave. Zhang He feels that she dared to meet Sun Jin in Seoul City, and she wants to prove is it because she still loves him or not. Jung Hee has trouble finding the address, and she can't reach Sun Jin. When day turns to night, Sun Jin just gets a call from Dong Moon that Jung Hee has come to Seoul to meet him. Sun Jin immediately looks for Jung Hee, and he manages to find her just before being stopped by the city thugs. On the other hand, Dong Moon comes to Seoul City to ensure Jung Hee's safety, but ends up being arrested by the police for passing the curfew. After what happened, Jung Hee had to stay at Sun Jin's house, and coincidentally, there was no one at his house. That night, Sun Jin told her that his parents wanted him to study in Seoul and that's why he moved to that city. Being near Sun Jin didn't make Zhang Yi happy. Instead, she found emptiness in her heart and always thought of Dong Moon. After saying goodbye to Sun Jin, Zhang Yi meets Dong Moon on her way home. Zhang Yi finally finds out that Dong Moon is following her again, but this time she is clearly worried about him. Dong Moon lied saying that last night he slept at a relative's house and his glasses were lost, but actually he was detained by the police and his glasses were broken when he was arrested. Zhang Yi asks why Dong Moon gave Sun Jin's address, if it ends up like this. It's because your heart is hurt, and I can't bear to see it. Dong Moon replied before finally changing the subject. When Dong Moon doesn't come to teach, Bong Su tells Zhang He that actually Dong Moon is being punished by the school after the police reported his offense while in Seoul. Zhang He feels guilty. She comes to see Dong Moon and apologizes to him, then says that as friends they should cater for each other. Dong Moon explains that he only acts like that to understand things. And when he is done, may him realize that the impossible is just impossible to happen, like winning Jung Hee's heart. Young Chun's relationship with Heiju is slowly getting closer. They are very happy to be able to share moments together and slowly begin to realize each other's feelings. Meanwhile, Jung Hee's feelings continue to be uneasy, but she doesn't know what caused it. When it rains, Jung Hee worries about Dong Moon, who is still serving his sentence at school. Jung Hee picks him up, saying that she can't ignore her best friend suffering alone. Dong Moon asks Jung Hee to leave and says that approaching him now will only confuse him. Jung Hee screams dropping her umbrella, and it turns out that Dong Moon still cares about her. Jung Hee wants to prove that they can care for each other without being lovers. Dong Moon can't say anything but asks her to go out to eat together. Dong Moon is very grateful to Jung Hee before he finally does the unexpected thing. One day, Jung Hee finally finds out that her housemate has a relationship with her father, and she is very disappointed. Jung Hee desperately wants to be angry with her, but realizes that she is not entirely at fault. Jung Hee can't reveal the truth because of her fear of a big fight, even though her mother already knows. Another problem came when Heiju's father was again arrested by the police, but this time Young Chun was dragged into the problem because he was thought to have helped him. Heiju gets up the courage to come to the police and explains that Young Chun only helped to find his father when he disappeared. Young Chun is released, but the repercussions he receives are rumors that he has strong ties to local thugs. The news reaches the principal, who then decides to expel Haju for giving the school a bad reputation. The school teacher realizes that it was just a misunderstanding, but Haju accepts the decision gracefully. Heiju realizes that her current existence will only make things difficult for those around her. The school teacher believes that Heiju has nothing to do with her father, but he can't help her and can only advise her to continue studying. Heiju's friends feel that this is an unfair decision. The situation forces Jung Hee to barge into the broadcast room and deliver a farewell message to her. The principal is angry, but the teachers pretend not to know about it, as the last form of support to Haju who has suffered injustice. Jung Hee is punished for her actions and she gets a big rage from her father. 
That's when Zhang He blamed her father for lying and having an affair, making everyone speechless. Zhang He's father contemplates his actions, while Zhang He's mother hands Du Hua some savings and asks her to live a new life. Zhang He's mother realizes that Du Hua has been collecting money and working hard to achieve her goals before leaving the house. Zhang He's mother advised her to find a good man and give birth to a beautiful daughter like her. Du Hua cries and apologizes for all her mistakes. After what happened, Zhang He's father apologized and he truly regrets what he did. The next day, Du Wu leaves a letter for Zhang He because she has to leave the house early. In her message, Du Wu said that she was very happy to be living with Zhang He and left her clothes as a gift. Meanwhile, Yong Chun decides to leave the city to start a new life. He can't stand the citizens who always think badly and almost destroy the life of an innocent girl. Heiju makes up her mind to live with Yong Chun and goes with him wherever he goes. Are you sure you won't regret going with me? Yong Chun asked. Heiju replies that she won't regret it at all. After seeing that Hoju meant it, Yum Chun accepted her to start a new life together. After what had happened, Haju packed up her things at her house to move out with the help of Jung Hee and Dong Moon. Jung Hee is not very familiar with Yum Chun, but she clearly asks him to take care of Haju. After saying goodbye, the two of them finally left the city. To comfort Jung Hee, who is sad, Dong Moon has prepared Sima tickets for the two of them. Dong Moon explains that the ticket is his second declaration of love. If Jung Hee comes to the cinema, then Dong Moon assumes that she accepts his feelings. Not long after that, Zhang He met Sun Jin who came to confess his feelings. During his time in Seoul, he always thinks about Zhang He and finally realizes that he likes her. Sun Jin says that he'll be back to Seoul at 4 o'clock and asks Zhang He to answer at the station if she wants. Zhang He is confused because Dong Moon's cinema tickets start at the same time, and she has to make a choice right away. Dong Moon excitedly goes to the cinema with flowers. He waited patiently for Zhang He until finally the staff announced that the film was about to start. On the other hand, Zhang He turns out to come to the station to meet Sun Jin. While people are laughing enjoying the movie with their partners, Dong Moon pretends to be happy to cover up his sadness. When the movie ends, Zhang He shows up and it turns out that she was just late for the movies. She sat in the front because she couldn't find her seat. Zhang He comes to Sun Jin only to tell him that she is starting to like Dong Moon. Sun Jin accepts her refusal, and he understands because the truth is that people's feelings always change just like him. The story ends when Jung Hee accepts Dong Moon's love even though she is shy to admit it. Dong Moon is happy because his struggles have paid off. Along the way, he keeps teasing Jung Hee and embarrassing her to death.